In the middle of a thunderstorm over the South China Sea, a brand new Airbus A330 is suffering a loss of thrust on both engines. Desperately, the pilots attempt to restart the affected engines, but loud bangs keep occurring. What happened here, and did they make it to an airport? Find out with me today as we take a look at the case of Singapore A36. Welcome to Airspace. On May 23, 2015, Singapore Airlines Flight 836 was cruising at night over the South China Sea on its flight from Singapore to Shanghai. The Airbus A330 was brand new. It had been delivered to Singapore Airlines not even two months before that date. The weather got worse as the flight neared the area around Hong Kong, and the pilots saw need to divert around towering thunderstorms continuously. Eventually, they found themselves before a wall of weather that they found difficult to cross. They could also not climb since they were already at the maximum altitude for their given weight. To find a way through the wall of thunderstorms, they considered their weather radar screens very carefully. But they saw no other way than to cross the band of severe weather, and they chose to do so at an area where the storm seemed thin and not very active. In order to do so, they requested a turn from air traffic control, which was granted right away. As the pilots expected that the ride would be quite bumpy for a few minutes, they activated the fastened seatbelt sign and even made an announcement over the public address system to make sure that everyone was strapped in. Moments later, the aircraft entered a dark cloud. Turbulence began shaking the aircraft, and suddenly a loud bang occurred and a warning popped up on the ECAM, the Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitoring System. It is displayed here, on the upper middle display between the pilots. It indicated that engine 2 had stalled, that means that the airflow in the engine had been severely disturbed, and that a loss of thrust had occurred. The checklist calls for the engine's thrust to be reduced to idle, and if the situation doesn't get better, it even calls for an engine shutdown. But before the crew could act, there appeared another engine stall warning, this time for engine 1. Baffled, the pilots now face two engines that appear to be stalling at the same time. Therefore, both checklists for the two engine stalls call for the same thing. Reduce thrust to idle on both engines, or maybe even shut them down. At that point, had they done that, the aircraft would have become all but a glider. Since the checklist for the more recent engine stall, the one of engine number 1, was displayed at the very top of the checklist display, and since the engine parameters of engine 2 seemed to stabilize, the crew decided to reduce thrust to idle on only engine number 1. But the warning did not disappear, and for that reason, the crew concluded that the engine needed to be shut down. They did so, and since the A330 cannot stay at cruise level on only one engine, they descended the aircraft to 26,000 feet. The pilots now evaluated whether they should divert to Hong Kong or Guangzhou, which were nearby, but such a diversion would have necessitated another flight through thunderstorms, which the pilots sought to avoid. Therefore, they decided to continue to Shanghai, as there were two more airports, more or less exactly along that route, that would have made for excellent alternate airports. As the workload started to diminish after all checklists were complete and decisions were made, the crew decided to call their operations and maintenance department and told their story over the satellite phone. The maintenance department receives detailed engine parameters from the aircraft that are in some areas more meaningful than the cockpit displays. Together with the pilots, they concluded to attempt to restart the engine. That endeavor was successful and the flight was able to continue on to Shanghai normally. The crew even cancelled their emergency status that they had declared earlier and landed safely in Shanghai. There, the aircraft's engines were thoroughly inspected with a borescope, but no damage was found. High thrust engine runs were performed on ground without any problems, and the aircraft was released to service. It made an uneventful return flight to Singapore, where another engine test was performed without any findings. At this point, Singapore Airlines could have returned the aircraft to service without any further actions, but the airline decided it wanted to know what had caused the eerie incident. Additionally, it created a new policy that dictated that newly delivered aircraft should not have two brand new engines. Instead, they decided that one of the new engines shall be removed and replaced by another older, well-adjusted engine. After the mechanics had removed one of the new engines, it was sent to a shop to be disassembled and thoroughly inspected. And sure enough, traces of a light grey substance were found on several compressor blades of the jet engine. To understand the following section, let's briefly review how a jet engine works. Air is sucked in at the intake and compressed in two stages, the intermediate pressure compressor and the high pressure compressor. 
Air is compressed radially, that means by turning fan blades instead of compressing it in a cylinder, like in a car. The highly compressed air is then routed to the burn chamber, where it is mixed with jet fuel and ignited. The hot gases then expand quickly through the turbine, which then drives the compressor to complete the cycle. The grey powder residue was found on blades here, at the intermediate pressure compressor stage. It was identified as material from the adjacent rubbing strips. You see, in order to maximize the compressor effectivity, clearance between these fan blades and the outer casing must be as minimal as possible. If the clearance is too large, air can flow backwards towards the engine intake, which would reduce the engine's efficiency. To achieve this minimal clearance, spacings are maintained extremely small. However, since the engine expands and contracts as it heats up and cools down, the diameter of the housing changes. Additionally, the diameter of the engine's rotating parts also changes depending on how fast the engine turns, due to the rotational forces and also due to temperature differences. As you can see, it would be very hard to match these two diameters efficiently. To allow for some leeway, a rather interesting approach is taken. The casing of the engine is lined with a material that can be rubbed away by the compressor blades if they were to make contact. It can happen under certain circumstances, and it happens individually for each engine, even for each compressor stage. Over time, each section of the engine grinds its individual correct path into the casing this way. However, the Rolls-Royce 772 engines of this Airbus A330 were brand new, and the compressor blades had not cut into this abradable lining very far. When the aircraft entered the thunderstorm, turbulence shook the aircraft, which can contribute to the abrasion of material slightly. Additionally, the engines ingested significant amounts of supercooled water or ice crystals, which is usually no problem for a jet engine. However, in this case, it cooled the casing down, leading to a contraction of the material. Therefore, it came in contact with the compressor blades and a lot of material was ground up and sent downstream. This material consists mainly of aluminium and silicon, and when it reached the burn chamber in sufficient quantities, it ignited in a way that the burn chamber is not designed for, and the pressure surge built up in the engine. The surge was released forward and backward simultaneously, disrupting the airflow through the engine and leading to a stall warning in both engines. When the engine control computers realized that there was a loss of thrust, they demanded more fuel to be injected. After the pressure surge was over, after a short moment, thrust increased again due to the added fuel, leading to a fast rotation of the engine. The rotational parts of the engine expanded due to centrifugal forces, and even more material could be abraded, leading to more stalls. This repeated five times in total, until either enough material was ground up, the engine's thrust was reduced, or the engine was shut down. Remarkably, the engines recovered from these stalls quite quickly. Both engines had actually recovered from the pressure surges when the crew decided to shut engine 1 down. They only did so because the warning remained displayed on the ECAM. As it turns out, this was due to a programming choice made by Rolls-Royce, the engine manufacturer. By design, once an engine stall was detected, the warning could remain displayed for at least 60 seconds, even if the stall had been resolved in the meantime. Why exactly they made this design choice, I do not know. After the accident, Rolls-Royce changed his logic so that the warning would only be displayed for about 10 seconds if the stall had cleared. It also increased the default tip clearances between the compressor blades of the intermediate pressure stage and the engine casing, so that hopefully such a problem would not occur again. Singapore Airlines stuck to their policy of switching one new engine with an old one upon delivery of a new aircraft. The A330 involved in this incident soon returned to normal service. It flew for Singapore Airlines until March 2021, after which it was returned to the lesser due to fleet resizing happening at Singapore Airlines and various other airlines of the world because of the pandemic. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video interesting, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks also to everyone who bought me a coffee with the link in the description. I really highly appreciate it. See you all in the next one.